All right, so this is this We The People News, videos without prejudice or without recourse. Not attorney, not giving legal advice, okay? Um, I'm a, this is going to be a short video, so I'm not even going to go rest on the attorney because I'm not even going to give an opinion. All right? Uh, never, never look straight forward. Always look around and be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. All right, so I have not seen this video, but I did like this uh, where it says presumptions of court, the canon. Uh, 3228 now I did a another video a, a few days ago um, I guess it's about three or four three videos back I think of the presumptions right but it's always look around you okay um, and see what everybody else's take on it and that way you have a variety to choose from to pick from and see if they're all in consistent to one another all right so let's go ahead and proceed forward on this what do y'all think all righty let me adjust this a little bit better for better or for worse i guess <laughs> let's go Welcome to another episode. In this one, I want to have a look at Roman Canon Law, the 12 presumptions of which come under Canon 3228. But before we get there, I just want to have a quick chat with you about Common Law, which is based on Natural Law or God's Law. And it's based on two... All right. Again, this is from you. Uh, he's in a UK and uh but we had the exact same thing from there to here that's the reason why our cops act the same that's the reason why we when you do first amendment audits whether you're in uk or whether you are in the united states exact same thing so something similar right and i uh, didn't mean to stop it but i just wanted to point this out so just because he says canon he's from you uh the uk does not mean it does not apply in the United States. In fact, we're a common law country. We just don't never use it because we're always under assumptions and presumptions of civil law. And if you ask all the attorneys, it's a civil matter, civil matter, civil matter, all the time. Civil is contract. Okay? Common law is constitution within the guides of the constitution, right? Common law is really uh, inalienable rights. But the courts have kind of slowly been taken up from the people over a period of time as well. Very simple principles that you do no harm and you cause no loss. And that's it. Everything else fits in and under them. But if you look at the legal system, which I understand or understand has over a hundred million codes and laws, there is no way that if you had access to the law book or law books or all these books or all these libraries full of books, it's just immense. There is no way that any one man, group, organization, company, even country could come anywhere close to knowing any and all of these codes that are in the code books. So you've got no chance of not breaking anything. Well, actually you don't because if you remember from the previous video, you are a man or a woman, you are not a person, you have a person. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to have a look at it. It's in the description below because it will help you understand more of what we're going to cover in a minute. So if you're a man or a woman, the laws do not apply. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just read you a couple of bits from that other video now just to give you a little taste for it if we'll and help you because you want these in the back of your mind when we go through the canons in just a moment. So legalese. A language can be created and used by a society. A corporation can be such a society. And if you remember in the video, we covered that the United Kingdom is a corporation as are most, if not all countries of the world. They are companies masquerading as countries. Legalese is such a language. It is English, but some words have very different meanings. Legalese is the language of the law society. Must is synonymous. Pause that right quick. Okay, for the United States, if you guys want to verify whether the United States is a corporation or not, uh, 28 USC 3002, uh, A15, tells you right there, United States Corporation. With May, so when they say you must turn up, it means you may turn up. Summons is synonymous with invitation. And if you recall from that video, when they summons you to court, they are giving you an invitation to come to court. It's also that you would summons the dead, which is interesting. 
understand is synonymous with stand under, which is why when the police ask you, do you understand, you would do well to say, no, I do not understand. They will think it means comprehension because of the way they have been trained, but you and I both know it doesn't mean comprehension at all. It means, do you agree to stand under my jurisdiction? And while we're on that subject, all of the courts and all of the lawyers have been trained, I believe, incorrectly in terms of what we look at and think should be the right way. But correctly, if you want a very corrupt and broken system, which job or whose job is, I must be which job actually, which job is to take everything they can from you and make you and I responsible for a whole bunch of things that we have no business being responsible for. A man or a woman, and these simply do not apply to you, which is what my other video was about. Um, so if we now step into the Canons uh, or Canon 3228, you might be a little surprised, you might in fact be very shocked about how corrupt and how bent the game really is. But when you understand how bent and corrupt the game really is, you're actually in a much better position to do something with it because all you need to do is rebut the presumptions. So without further ado, let's dive in and have some fun with this. And by the way, you're going to be looking at a mind map I did of this, which is a summary, a reminder for me. I do lots of mind maps. I have done now for about 25 years. And if any of you would like me to do a video on that, in, in my mind, it is probably the finest way to capture, store, organize, collate, link up large blocks of information, amongst other things. It's also very useful for many things, and I'm happy to do a video on that. In fact, I probably will do anyway. Um, so let's get started with this. Canon 3228, the 12 presumptions of court. Um, before we get started, by the way, I'm going to read this. It's uh, an article that was on a website called The Bridge. You might want to go and have a look at The Bridge. It has some really, really in-depth, very interesting information, not just on law, but on historical documents, on people. It's a very, very well put together resource, and I highly recommend it. Canon 3228, a Roman court does not operate according to any true rule of law, but by presumptions of the law. Therefore, if presumptions presented by the private bar guild are not rebutted, they become fact and are therefore said to stand true, or as truth in commerce. There are 12 key presumptions asserted by the private bar guilds, which if unchallenged stand true, being public record public service, public oath, immunity, summons, custody, court of guardians, court of trustees, government as executor beneficiary, executor de son tort, incompetence, guilt. Public record. The presumption of public record is that any matter brought before the lower Roman courts is a matter for the public record when in fact it is presumed by the members of the private bar guild that the matter is a private bar guild business matter unless openly rebuked and rejected by stating clearly that the matter is to be on the public record the matter remains a private bar guild matter completely under private bar guild rules so if you think about that for a minute unless you state that you want this as a matter of public record it remains in the private and a whole different set of rules apply. Public service. The presumption of public service is that all members of the private bar <coughs> guild who have all sworn a solemn secret, absolute oath to their guild, then act as public agents of the government or public officials by making additional oaths of public office that openly and deliberately contradict their private superior oaths to their own guild. Unless openly rebuked and rejected, the claim stands that these private bar guild members are legitimate public servants and therefore trustees under public oath. The presumption of public oath is that all members of the private bar guild, acting in the capacity of public officials who have sworn a solemn public oath, remain bound by that oath and therefore bound to serve honestly, impartially and fairly as dictated by their oath. Unless openly challenged and demanded, the presumption stands that the private bar guild members have functioned under their public oath in contradiction to their guild oath. If challenged, such individuals must recuse themselves as having a conflict of interest and cannot possibly stand under a public oath. 
May I suggest you have a think about that one and ponder what that really means? Immunity. The presumption of immunity is that key members of the private bar guild in the capacity of public officials acting as judges, prosecutors and magistrates who have sworn a solemn public oath in good faith are immune from personal claims of injury and liability unless openly challenged and their oath demanded. The presumption stands that the members of the private bar guild as public trustees acting as judges, prosecutors and magistrates are immune from any personal accountability for their actions. Summons. The presumption of summons is that by custom a summons unrebutted stands and therefore one who attends court is presumed to accept a position, defendant, juror, witness and jurisdiction of the court. Attendance to court is usually invitation by summons, unless the summons is rejected and returned with a copy of the rejection filed prior to choosing to visit or attend, jurisdiction and position as the accused and the existence of guilt stands. Which you could read into that, actually, since you turn up as the defendant, you are presumed guilty until you can prove your innocence, which is something you really want to avoid doing. Custody. The presumption of custody is that by custom, a summons or warrant for arrest unrebutted stands and therefore one who attends court is presumed to be a thing and therefore liable to be detained by custodians. And this is really, really important. This includes the dead legal fiction, non-human person that corporate government rules and regulations are written for. Custodians may only lawfully hold custody of property and things not flesh and blood soul possessing beings. I'm going to read that again because it's really vital. Custodians may only lawfully hold custody of property and things not flesh and blood soul possessing beings. Unless this presumption is openly challenged by rejection of summons and or at court, the presumption stands you are a thing and property therefore lawfully able to be kept in custody by custodians. Court of Guardians. The presumption of Court of Guardians is the presumption that you may be listed as a resident of a ward of a local government area and have listed on your passport the letter P. Now I'm going to come to that at the end of this and give you a little more information on that. You are a pauper and therefore under the guardian powers of the government and its agents as Court of Guardians. Unless this presumption is openly challenged to demonstrate you are both a general guardian and general executor of the matter, which is the trust, before the court, the presumption stands that you are by default a pauper, a lunatic, and therefore must obey the rules of the clerk of the guardians, the clerk of the magistrate's court. That's the clerk I actually think happens to be the most powerful man or woman in the room. Well, obviously, other than you, actually, because they're representing a dead legal fiction, so you are more powerful than them. Court of Trustees. The presumption of Court of Trustees is that members of the private bar guild presume you accept the office of trustee as a public servant and government employee, which if you remember in the other video, we talked that if you have a national insurance number, you actually are a government employee of the United Kingdom Corporation if you're in the UK. Just by attending a Roman court, as such courts are always for public trustees by the rules of the guild and the Roman system. Unless this presumption is openly challenged to state you are merely visiting by invitation to clear up the matter and you are not a government employee or public trustee in this instance, the presumption stands and is assumed as one of the most significant reasons to claim jurisdiction simply because you appeared. Dual role. The presumption of government acting in two roles as executor and beneficiary is that for the matter at hand, the private bar guild appoints the judge stroke magistrate in the capacity of executor while the prosecutor acts in the capacity of beneficiary of the trust for the current matter. Unless this presumption is openly challenged to demonstrate you are both a general guardian and general executor of the matter, which is the trust before the court, the presumption stands that, and you are by default the trustee, therefore must obey the rules of the executor, the judge or the magistrate. False executor. The presumption of executor de son tort is the presumption that if the accused does seek to assert their right as executor and beneficiary over their body, mind, soul, they are acting as an executor de son tort or false executor, challenging the rightful judge as executor. Therefore, 
the judge stroke magistrate assumes the role of true executor and has the right to have you arrested, detained, fined or forced into a psychiatric evaluation. Unless this presumption is openly challenged by not only asserting one's position as executor as well as questioning if the judge or magistrate is seeking to act as executor de son tort, the presumption stands and a judge or magistrate of the private bar guild may seek the assistance of bailiffs or sheriffs to assert their false claim. The presumption of incompetence is the presumption that you are at least ignorant of the law, therefore incompetent to present yourself and argue properly. Therefore, the judge stroke magistrate as executor has the right to have you arrested, detained, <coughs> fined or forced into a psychiatric evaluation. Unless this presumption is openly challenged to the fact that you know your position as executor and beneficiary and actively rebuke and object to any contrary presumptions, then it stands by the time of pleading that you are incompetent then the judge or magistrate can do what they need to do to keep you obedient. Guilt. The presumption of guilt is the presumption that it is presumed to be a private business meeting of the Bar Guild. You are guilty whether you plead guilty, do not plead, or plead not guilty. Therefore, unless you have previously prepared an affidavit of truth and motion to dismiss with extreme prejudice onto the public record or call a demurrer, then the presumption is that you are guilty and the private bar guild can hold you until a bond is prepared to guarantee the amount the guild wants to profit from you. It's worth having a read through them many, many times so that you can start to internalize them and capture the information into your being because this is very much about a mindset and knowing your position and knowing who you really are. Now let's give you a little bit of extra information about the pauper uh, that we mentioned before because that really is very interesting as well. Are you a pauper in all capitals, which is dog Latin? Are you a pauper, which is descriptive English, which is in sentence case? The legal definition of pauper, an impoverished person who is supported at public expense, an indigent litigant who is permitted to sue or defend without paying costs, an impoverished criminal defendant who has a right to receive legal services without charge, the statutes of several states make ample provision for the support of the poor. This description means that we are all paupers as we all accept the benefits and privileges of the parish or state. We are all eligible for welfare, taxation, pension, imprisonment, bills, fines and charges, even legal aid if we can get it. Therefore, we are all supported at the public expense. The assumptions are made through the poor laws of the 1600s, and they're worth having a look at, made as a ward of the parish and also paupers. This assumption carries on to this day with the birth certificate and the P on your passport. Check the type on your passport and the P is an update and it still means pauper. The Home Office, when asked, do not know what the P stands for. They stated it stood for electronically readable passport, even though it still says P on pre-electronic readable passports. Other reports stated it stood for personal. The historical origins of the settlement certificate where the updated passport and national insurance number and now universal credit and ID rolled into one. A certificate of settlement from 1662, by 1836 known as a birth certificate, had to be carried and if the carrier was vagrant or unable to find work they would be forced by the parish to wear a band with P on their right arm. They could then enjoy the benefits of the workhouse. Now I hope that's given you something to really think about and get to grips with the fact that you can rebut the presumptions which negates them and brings everything back into order the way it should be. And it has been my experience that when you start to behave as an adult, as a grown man or woman, because you've taken the time to figure out how this works, and it's not simple because the information, it's more apparent and more common now, but... I go with age and majority. It has been well hidden, obfuscated, or occulted, if you will, to keep it away from us so that the merry gang of gangsters can carry on with their illegitimate and unlawful theft of everything from us to fatten their own coffers. I hope you guys stay well, that you can put this information to good use. There are links in the description of this video. There are also links to the other platforms where you will find more content that can be shown here on YouTube. Um, well, it can be shown, but it gets taken down. And thank you for all your support. And I look forward very much. All right. <clears throat> so if you want to look him up, okay, 
This was uh, done in 2020, and it's capital A, small d, small r, small i, small a, small n. Okay? And if you wanted to get into a little bit more over and over and over, you either look it up in my videos, or you just kind of tap in EP, uh, EP.198, um, straight line through, Canon 32. 28 uh, slash uh, the 12 uh, shocking presumptions of court all right so uh, if you want to try to check out some more of his stuff there you guys go all right this will be the people news bye y'all